Sex is a gamble, and not just in the physical sense. The mental risks we take in relationships are already exhausting enough. When will he text me back? Am I good enough? What if she doesn't like who I really am? Those emotional stakes can feel overwhelming, but they're almost modest compared to the physical investment our bodies make in reproduction. And the two sexes approach this gamble very differently. For females, the reproductive wager is biologically a high-stakes one. The egg is like pushing all your chips into the center of the table. An ovum takes over a year to develop, and in terms of human cells, it's enormous, roughly a tenth of a millimeter, just visible to the naked eye. Supporting tissues in the uterus prepare for its arrival, only to be shed and rebuilt if fertilization never occurs. And then there's the time commitment. Once an egg is released, the entire reproductive system devotes itself to that single cell for almost a month, or close to 10 if it's fertilized. Males, on the other hand, play a very different game. If female gametes are the high rollers, sperm are more like penny slots. They're tiny, about one one hundred thousandth the size of an egg, and produced with relative ease, much like skin cells. Their design is stripped down, just a nucleus, a tail, and some mitochondria to fuel the trip. Their only real task is to deliver DNA and then fall apart. Of course, the odds of success for any single sperm are slim, but rather than banking everything on one shot, the male reproductive system floods the odds with numbers. This strategy explains why the testes, the gonads of the male anatomy, are literally left hanging outside the body. Unlike the ovaries, safely tucked away inside, the testicles dangle in the scrotum. Sperm may be simple, but they're extremely sensitive to heat. At normal body temperature, their ability to divide and mature falters, so the testes remain outside to maintain a cooler environment essential for sperm production. Despite their apparent toughness, sperm are surprisingly delicate in this way. The tests themselves are intricate. Each one is divided into about 250 lobules, each packed with coiled, seminiferous tubules. These are the sperm factories lined with a special epithelium around a fluid-filled lumen. Inside, Sertoli cells nourish developing sperm, while Leydig cells secrete testosterone, much like the way the corpus luteum supports estrogen production in females. Compared to the long and resource-heavy process of making an egg, sperm production is far more efficient something like the way skin cells continually regenerate. Here, sperm begin forming on the outer edges of the tubules and move inward as they mature. This process starts at puberty, when the hypothalamus releases gonadotropin-releasing hormone. That, in turn, prompts the pituitary to send out follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. In males, LH signals Leydig cells to release testosterone, while FSH spurs Sertoli cells to produce androgen-binding protein, which allows testosterone to concentrate locally and trigger sperm production. The stem cells at the root of this, spermatogonia, have been dividing quietly since childhood, but under the influence of testosterone, they begin producing not just more stem cells, but also cells that mature into sperm. Through meiosis, one primary spermatocyte eventually yields four spermatids, which then develop tails in a process called spermiogenesis. It takes about five weeks, but because the system runs continuously, a mature male can produce about 1,500 sperm every second. Of course, sperm aren't immediately ready for action. Once formed, they need help moving out of the seminiferous tubules. Layers of contractile cells push them along to the reet testis, and from there, into the epididymis. This long coiled tube serves as a finishing school where sperm spend about 20 days maturing and gaining the ability to move. By the time they leave, they're equipped with energy producing mitochondria, but remain dormant until activated by glandular secretions during ejaculation. When ejaculation occurs, sperm travel from the epididymis through the vas deferens, joining the ducts of the seminal glands to form the ejaculatory ducts, which then empty into the urethra. Along the way, different glands add their contributions to semen. The seminal vesicles provide a yellowish fluid with enzymes, fructose, and prostaglandins to nourish sperm and help them on their journey through the female reproductive tract. The prostate adds citric acid and enzymes that keep semen fluid and mobile. Finally, the tiny bulbourethral glands secrete a clear mucus that clears residual urine and prepares the urethra. And then there's the penis the structure most commonly associated with male anatomy. It contains erectile tissue that fills with blood during arousal, creating the rigidity needed for penetration. 
But evolutionarily speaking, its role is purely functional, a delivery system to bring sperm as close as possible to the egg. The true investment lies in the cells themselves and the elaborate system that produces, matures, and propels them toward their one chance at fertilization. And that's the incredible journey of sperm, from their delicate beginnings in the testes, to maturing in the epididymis, and finally joining the race during ejaculation. It's a process that's cheap and efficient compared to egg production, but no less fascinating in its complexity. If you found this breakdown interesting, don't forget to hit like, subscribe for more deep dives into human biology, and drop a comment with what you'd like us to explore next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.